and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And you're going to have to, I'm going to get my excuses in early today. I feel like I've been run over by a truck. I've come down with something. It's, I suspect Mark has given me this from all those miles away, but I really am feeling rotten. Um, I, I'm determined though, if possible, I managed to continue to make videos despite having COVID for a week or two. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try and do a video today. And what a puzzle. I mean, actually, this cheered me up. This came in last night from a Spartacus, a, a Google Doodle puzzle. It is just beautiful. It's sort of a Philomeno variant, so not Sudoku today. But honestly, I mean, I don't know whether any, I know, I know we do have people who watch the channel who work for Google. So I don't know whether there's any way that you could create, you know, a real Google Doodle out of this puzzle, but wouldn't that be absolutely brilliant? Because this, it's just beautiful. It really is. Um, to celebrate, you know, World Puzzle Day or something, this, this, uh, it would be a, a lovely thing to happen. Anyway, happy birthday, Spartacus. Um, and I hope that my solve of your puzzle will give you, uh, it will give you some pleasure. Let's, uh, let's hope I can do it uh, in my current state. Uh, speaking of birthdays, though, a couple of other birthdays to announce. Zhao, uh, your friends Luisa, David and Marina in Brazil asked me to wish you a happy birthday. So I hope you have a brilliant day, despite the result in the football last night. And also, uh, this is a good one, actually. Andre, Andre van Soest uh, from the Netherlands has turned 58 today and Andre is one of the most generous backers to our Patreon. Um, you can see his name uh, at the start of every video in our thank you card and quite amusingly, and I don't know if Andre actually knows this, um, his nephew Henk uh, asked us to, um, to say happy birthday to him and Henk's pseudonym in the world of Sudoku is none other than Codec. And I don't know whether Andre knows that his nephew is one of the greatest constructors in the whole world. He probably does, but wouldn't it be lovely if I've just revealed it? <laughs> so anyway, um, Andre, I hope you have a brilliant day and thank you so much for your support of the channel. Um, now, what else do I need to mention before I read you the rules of the Google Doodle? Let me think about that. I need to say, um, well done to some of you, some more of you who've managed to solve the cryptic scriptures of the Secret Snake Society. This is our patron reward for December. Very well done to RJ Powers, William Poltsin, Jens Penkoki, uh, Thomas Sylvester, Grufty, Thomas Shockman, Robin Lederer, on, um, Will Semmer, Joe Chang, Triple Three Res, Zach Hercher, Claire Mitchell, Logan Nidert, and Fool on Hill, happy birthday to your mother, Wendy, Fool on Hill. Um, Sam and Gray, who apparently spent their 11th wedding anniversary um, solving the pack. That is fantastic. Matt Boss, Jeff Frank and Matthew Brockwell. And Andrew Miller as well, who, um, who did annotate his entry with... Um, the epithet that Hiss Hissing Sid is innocent. Well, H Hissing Sid was not innocent, was he, Andrew? Um, well, <laughs> it's one of my favourite things. It, it's a reference to Captain Beaky, which I think was number one. Back in the late 70s, Keith Michelle, the Shakespearean actor, used to read it. And it was written by the guy who went, I think he wrote, I want to say he wrote some of Only Fools and Horses, but that might be wrong. But anyway, um, it also, his, um, the Hissing Seed Captain Beaky thing features one of my favourite lines, and I'm not going to remember it now. Said so Captain Beaky to his men will not see Hissing Sid again. And as they marched off down the road, they sang in praise of Timid Toad. Above them flew old Batty Bat with his eyes, with his wings stretched out quite flat. Owl's idea, the clever fella, to have a flying umbrella. Ah, I love that. <laughs> Owl's idea, the clever fella, to have a flying umbrella. Um, just trips off the tongue if you like that sort of thing. And apologies for, for distracting, uh, distracting myself from my illness and my uh, my job, which is to solve this puzzle for you. Um, now, let me read you the rules. Isn't this, I mean, it's just beautiful. The thumbnail today is going to do itself, and that is a good thing, because I probably won't have much time before I return to my bed. Uh, anyway, Google Doodle by Aspartacus. These are the rules. Divide the grid into regions of orthogonally connected cells. Now, let's stop there 
and just check that everybody knows what orthogonally connected means. Those two cells are orthogonally connected because they share an edge. These two cells are not orthogonally connected because they only join at a point. If we were to add a third cell in, now these three cells are orthogonally connected. So orthogonally connected is just a very posh way of describing something incredibly simple. Um, and we have to divide the grid into regions of orthogonally connected cells so that no two regions of the same size share an edge. Enter a number into each cell equal to the size of its region. So we can, we've got some givens here. So we know that this cell here, which has a three in it, will be part of a region that's of size three. Um, so it'll be something like that. This two region will be of size two. We could have massive regions in the grid. That would be of size 10, for example. Uh, and there's only one more rule, uh, which is that digits on a thermometer must increase from the bulb end. So, um, so imagine that was a one. This square would have to be greater than one. Doesn't have to be two. I'm just actually thinking to myself, I might have to be careful today because normally, of course, I'm dealing only with the numbers one to nine from a Sudoku perspective. But there's nothing in the instructions that say we're only dealing with the numbers one to nine. So it's possible that we could be going up into huge numbers today. There is nothing restricting that. I've realized I can't see properly. So I'm going to put my other glasses on. <laughs> Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, right, I'm going to start with the easy win. That is a, That has a one in it. So that is a region of size one. Boom, there we go. Do we color it in? Yeah, let's color it in. Right, so that's a region of size one. Um, probably what we want to do here is to divide the thermometers up, isn't it? Because this, this G, because numbers have to increase along the thermometer, each cell along this thermometer is in a different philomeno region. So the, let me see if we can do this. So that's got to be in a different region from that's got to be in a different region. That's got to be in a different region. These two here have to be in a different region, obviously, because they're going to contain different numbers. I'm just pausing briefly because I can't quite I don't think that's necessarily forced. That's forced. Yeah, OK. This central bulb cell is forced. That's got to be a one, hasn't it? Because it cannot be uh, because it has to be, have it contain a different number to these cells that surround it. It's effectively boxed in and it is of size one. So that's going to give me another, another of these pink colored cells. Um, okay, we can draw that line segment in. Right, there, I can see something then that's quite interesting. Look, this little cell, which must contain at least a two, is being forced out to the east where it's going to pick up the bulb of this one. So those two need to be in the same region. Um, now, what I normally do for Philomeno, I don't know whether other people do this, but it's what I like to do, is I like to put in the minimum size of the, um, uh, of the sort of regions that have to go into each, each cell. So if we do that here, you can see this is at least a two. It hits this. Now, if we start to divide the red, um, the red thermometer up, you can see now that because this cell is at least a two, oh, uh, okay, so these threes could join together, look. But because this bulb can't be a one, we get a, slight, a slightly more constrained thermometer situation. Um, Okay, the six here is a problem, isn't it? Right, so the six here, look, let's have a quick look at this. This six, it can't, it's, it's a clearly a different number from this cell, which is lower on the thermometer, and clearly a different number from this cell, which is higher on the thermometer. Now, if we took all of that two by two, we'd only reach a count of four. So we're gonna have to take those two cells as well. So those, all of these cells are definitely part of the six. Now the seven, look, has to get out. So that's going to come strolling along this way. Um, okay, so I'm just wondering if that can be part of the set. This, this tip of the thermometer, can that join up with the seven? It probably can. 
Maybe it probably maybe it has to. Uh, if it doesn't, then it has to join up with this bulb, which of course is making this bulb six. It would make this at least an eight. How big is this grid, by the way? Maybe that's a sensible thing to think about. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, thirteen across by six, so it's seventy-eight cells. So that might be worth keeping track of if we're trying to put in enormous regions. Um, ah, look. Okay, that two region has actually got fixed now. So let's put that in. What else could we say here? We could. Hmm. This five region has to come down, doesn't it? Because even if it took those two cells, it's got to come. It's got to take all all of those three cells. So let's put that in. So the two region. Ah, the two region is is forced at the bottom. Aha! There we go. Another little deduction. The four region. Ah, yeah. Okay. This four region here has to come down a little bit and that's going to pen right so this this region which we know is at least of size three is forced to do that this four region is at least a size four so this is where we have to be a bit careful because we've got to bear in mind that these numbers that i pencil marked in are not necessarily the numbers that this is not necessarily a region of size three it could be a, a bigger region but it's at least of size three so those cells are all part of the same region. These cells are all part of the same region. Uh, let's choose purple for that. Oh, that's rather pretty, isn't it? We're making our Google Doodle even prettier. Um, right. Oh, ah, OK, sorry, I should have seen this. This five has now got penned in, so it must be a five. And then we can do that and that. And that, and this is going to do something to my six. Oh, this is good. It's good. I'm very pleased if today I don't have to do a monstrous puzzle. So it's at least here, this six. It could be more. This could be a 20 or something, but it's at least six. So it must take all those cells. Now our seven, what's this doing now? Right, it can take that cell and that cell in theory, but it must take this cell and this cell as well. So those two cells have to join it. Um, now, can we improve upon that? Probably. Uh, it seems very difficult for this. Oh, well, OK. This cell must be part of yellow now, because if it isn't, where can it get its five cells from? It can get two from here, but then it couldn't extend into any other cell on the yellow thermometer because we know these must be different digits from whatever this digit is. So it would not be able to grow any more than two, but we know it's at least a five. So that is yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, we know it's got to grow at least one more. So this cell now, this is probably a sensible thing to do, is at least a seven which means there's much more flexibility for this cell. So if this does join here, eight, nine, at least 10, which would be, oh, hang on, this is getting silly, isn't it? Ha hang on, let me just think about this. If this bounces into here, I don't think there's enough room, I think, there's something going on here that makes this seem very unlikely. In fact, what I should probably do is draw some more boundaries in, I think. Uh, let's do this and see if this sheds any light on what's going on in the world. Yeah, look, this is totally divided up. Ooh. Oh, hang on. Be careful here, Simon. Don't get carried away. Yeah, this is another of these one cells, this cell here. That's got to be a bulb. Um, now... Okay, so what, what, now let me think about this, oh right, now, aha, there is a problem here, this little 2 by 2 is absolutely broken, it's broken, if, if I join this cell up to this cell, ah, that's lovely, right, the key is this cell actually, now this cell, is the third cell along its thermometer so it must grow 
and it must hit this cell. So this, that is a forced region. Now we might be growing bigger than that, but we must be doing at least these three cells. Now, how could this cell now join to this cell? So let's say this was a three, which is the least it could be. If we join, this is at least a four from its position on the thermometer. So if it joins to this, this thermometer is the wrong way round. We'd have a four earlier on the thermometer than a three. So that's impossible, which means we can draw this line segment in. And we know that this cell here is at least a four. So this is lovely. It's going to hit the yellow. So this is now at least a seven. Now this, we know that this cell is different from this cell. So, okay, so that becomes a one which is great because I know the color of one. We can fill that in. Um, now this has got to grow, look. Oh, so we could be we could be pincering in and um, sort of throttling our six here. We've got to increase this at least to there. Oh, no, hang on. Oh, no, right, sorry, no, I was about to, I, sh I shouldn't put this three in because that three is is presuming this doesn't grow. It's at least a three. That's at least a two. This is at least a one, four, five, six. Um, and then because this, this is interesting as well, look, that's now a forced uh, line segment. So this six here, I'm running out of colors, has got to drop down. I'll use brown again on the basis. It's quite unlikely these browns will be part of the same region. Um, now, what's going on here, though? This this feels cluttered up. Right. OK. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I actually know what size the yellow one is, but I do know what size the brown one is now, because if this was if this grows and takes this cell, it's pinching in the yellow and then the yellow would be a maximum of seven. And the brown would be at least seven. And again, the thermometer wouldn't be increasing. So this brown must stop. So that is a six region, which we can therefore isolate. But we don't know if this stops, the yellow region stops or, or jumps up here. Uh, this is at least one. Ah, no, <laughs> I was about to say, well, it can't, okay, if it's one, it, let's stop looking at Sudoku as well, look at these ones in the row, think it can't be a one, we've already got a one in the row, that is not how Philomeno works. Okay, so this cell is at least two, this cell is at least three, and it's the same, these two are part of the same region. Um, ah, those two are the same. Ah, here's something. These two are the same. Look, let's fill that in and see if that I can use yellow again. I think now. So these two are the same. Oh, that's really weird. That's almost disappeared. Oh, hang on. I can't use yellow. I can't actually see the bulb. Oh, the bulb's come back now. That's weird. The bulb was very, very similar to the yellow. At least it was in, in, with my eyes. So these two are the same. So this is at least a four now. Let's put that in. So this is at least a five. This is at least a six. Good grief. This is all getting quite difficult as well. So is it really possible? for this to join that. Surely not. If this joins that, no, the thermometers go the wrong way round again, doesn't it? Because we'd be saying these two are the same size. But this thermometer would be saying that this is lower. But this thermometer would be saying that the paradox, the absolute opposite of that, would be saying this was higher. So, so we can't do that. So this does not join there, which means that comes out. Right, so this is now at least a five. This is at least a six. One, two, ah, so there is a gap here. Look, we don't have necessarily a continuous thermometer. 
Okay, but this can still be a one, which is disappointing because that's not going to put any pressure on the top of the grid. Oh, this is, oh no, <laughs> I think where my cursor was there, maybe think I could extend this downwards, that would have been useful. But no, um, so that's at least a two, that's at least a three. So let's have a quick think about what's going on up here, because if that's at least a six, oh no, there's actually quite a lot of room up here. All of these other numbers are quite small. Um, it depends really which way this five goes. If the five goes up, this six is going to be very constrained. In fact, that's probably going to be, oh no, it can't hit that. Oh, that's interesting. Well, is it interesting? I'm just noticing that this, if it was a six, it couldn't bump into this six because that would be two regions of size six connecting. Um, hmm. Okay, and we've got to, we've got this digit, which is quite a big digit. We've got fifteen. Ooh. Ah, right. Okay, there is a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Yeah, this, this just doesn't work. Right, okay. We've got this is at least a six. This is at least a four. This is at least a five. So I want to ask the question, is it possible in this puzzle for these three regions to be in different, for the, well, for those three to be different regions? Well, four plus five plus six is 15. Now, if you look at this carefully, how how can we create regions for these these three clues here? We can never go through this because this region is definitely different from that. And this region is definitely different from that because this is higher on the thermo and shares a cell with these two. In fact, that might be easier to see if I actually make those the same color. This five is definitely different from the six. This... Uh, the th yeah, and the three is what's creating the problem, actually. If that three wasn't there, it could work because then we would have that region for 15, six plus four plus five to fit into. But with this three down here, it, this three is clearly different from six, four and five. There is a knowledge bomb for you. It simply cannot be the same. There's just not enough room. There's just not enough room. I'm just pausing there just to double check that I agree with myself. I don't think it matters, does it, if that comes over here? Yeah, no, that's absolutely broken. There's definitely not nine cells worth of digits that are possible here. Right, so what we've now learnt is that, well, one of these clues has to join up with one of the others. These two can't join together because they're in the, they're on the same thermo. Um, oh, these two can't join together because that's going to create a problem here. The thermos are going to go backwards again. Because if this was if these were the same number, let's try and make those both six for a moment. Then this should be a seven. That should be a seven, and that should make that an eight. So we, we, we run into a paradox again. Right, so in fact, we know that one and that one are the same. So this is at least a six. That's lovely. Gosh, and suddenly it's got a bit of a kick to it, this puzzle. Um, so these two are the same. So I need to record that somehow. Let's put, let's make those pink. These are the same region. This is now at least a seven. Right. Yeah, okay, but this 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 little grey region is at least of size four. And that means it cannot live entirely within row four of this puzzle. It's gonna have to it's gonna have to take at least one of these two cells. And if it takes at least one of these two cells, the only way of connecting those sixes together is gonna be to use the bottom of the grid. And the only way that's gonna work is something like that, which is seven cells, it's not six cells. I don't think there's any way 
of no there is no way once this comes down to here this is at least a seven so if that's at least a seven this is now at least an eight um that's not doing anything to this is it so now well now we're running into the same problem again actually because now if we look at this region which is very much self-contained i've got a three plus a four which is seven and another seven that's 14. so 14 of those 15 cells are going to be made up by these regions at least obviously we could increase any of these by another one and then it would take all of those cells so this eight cannot take more than one cell from this this cell on 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 or this sort of rectangle on the right so this has got to come this way and take quite a lot of real estate one two three four it can take one from here so it's got to take three more cells it's got to take three more cells and it can't well it can't bash into that because <laughs> the moment it bashes into that that's going to be at least a nine <laughs> so and it clearly can't be a nine so it doesn't take this if it did all right how maybe it's this one actually what if it didn't bump into that one if this is not brown this is at least a four and there's not enough room there's not enough room for this to um for this to exist or to take the three extra cells it needs over here if this is not brown so that is brown and that is gorgeous because that means this is at least an oh oh although right this has now gone up <laughs> so this one's now gone up to at least nine right and i've only got seven in it right so this one's coming up we've got sort of a lot a dinosaur here we're building at the top of the grid um now this this uh, this is brown and it's eight at least so it cannot bump into this so that must be right so that is a two because if it's anything else it's going to block off brown from connecting brown connects like this one two three four five six seven so we don't know about this cell yet it's possible brown takes this cell and then this cell Oh, hang on, I've just noticed something. Well, it doesn't actually help me, to be honest, what I've just noticed. But if this is five and this is two, that must be three and that must be four on the thermo. So they're actually done. Aha. Now, that's great. Because it allows me to delineate these regions. But what I don't think it tells me is whether this is a naked one or not. What's the betting? What do we think? Do we think this is going to go here or do we think it's going to go there? I don't know. And it's, oh, I suppose this is at least eight as well. So that's at least nine. Okay. Hmm. this can't right that's interesting this can't be a two because if it's a two it goes up there and it forces that to be a two region which would be the same size and the thermo wouldn't increase so that's a one that's a little deduction which we shall take with pleasure thank you aspartagus for giving us that so we have got a total breakage of sudoku in row three um now now what okay well what about this blue region this we know this is at least five and we know it can't take more than one cell beneath it because of this special 15 cell region that we have we've got to fill and we know we've already got 14 cells of that definitely filled by the four the seven and the three so this has got to go up well it's got to go up twice is it yes it is right here we go I can draw these these things in because 
let's be careful about this, but this cannot take this because the green thermo would then be broken. And it cannot take this because then this red thermo would be broken. So it has to actually go all the way up to the top of the grid at least. Oh. Oh, right. What, what's this then? That's an interesting question. That is at least a six. It's not blue, therefore. It's not going to bump into this. It can't bump into green. Because if it bumps into green, this is pushing the... Well, it's, in fact, that's that seems to be forced now. Aha. Sorry, there's a couple of moments, I think, where I could have been more efficient in my establishment of regions here that now this thermo look is goes one something three so it must go one two three and we can draw that region in but all of that is by the by i think the critical thing is to ask how this achieves a count of at least six well the only way it can do it is if it joins yellow so that is yellow so that's yellow um the, oh right that can't be a one so the only thing that can be is yellow. So now yellow has reached a count of 12 and it could be 13. So this is 12 or 13. Depending on what. Oh no, this, right. Right, I, don't, I still don't know what blue does. But I do know what that 3 does now. Because there's only enough room for it to sit like that. So that must be what it does now. Let's use the correct colour. Brown, I think, is, is legitimate there, isn't it? So that's got to sit in this little hole. Let's draw that in. This is at least a two, so that's got to... Oh, no. Ooh, OK. All right, well, that's good in a way, but it's slightly worrying as well, because that has just taken this cell, which has interfered with our three by five here, and therefore nothing else. So, th so this can't come here anymore, is my belief. So that must be a two. It must do that. Two we seem to always make green. So let's fill that in. So yeah, so we've got four here plus seven plus three. That is 14. There's only 14 cells in that section of digits. So the blue must go there. So that's a five. This was, was it that's 12. Now, I don't really have a good way of filling in 12. I'll use, shall I use hexadecimal? I'll use hexadecimal for that. C. Um, right, so there, that's 12. This 5 gets sealed off, look. So let's seal that off and make it look pretty. Seal off our C region. The, the 8 region now cannot interfere with what's on its right so that must be the final brown cell it is therefore an eight size region um, which is lovely to know so we can fill this in with the power of eightage and we, well we know that this is a four we know that this is a seven because there's not enough room for anything to be bigger than this so the question is how do we join this all up this well, that must be seven. It's weird that this has only one solution, actually. Well, maybe it's not. OK, so yeah, so if the four took this cell, you can see there's not enough space for the C, the seven to connect to itself. So the four doesn't take this cell, so that can only be a seven. And now the four must take this cell, which forces the seven to come round it. Now the four is penned in, in fact, isn't it? So that fixes that. We've got to get the seven out. One, two, one, two, three, four. So the seven is finished. The three is finished. And there we go. We've done the puzzle. All we've got all that's left to do is to color it in, which I will certainly be doing. Um, oh, I'm actually quite relieved that, that I managed to do this. I've been feeling so terrible today. And Aspartagus, thank you very much for sending me a puzzle that not only was fairly approachable today, but was actually, it was the moment um, that we saw uh, the email with this puzzle in it, it sort of hits you, it's like smacks you, it's like, wow, just wow, what have you done there? So it's, um, it got me out of bed, frankly. <laughs>
<laughs> so for that, I am grateful. Um, I hope you all have a good Saturday night. Let me know in the comments how you got on with the puzzle. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>